Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Franny and this is my second recent reads video for 2021, which means that I'll be talking about the books that I've been reading this year from book number 6 to book number 10. First book I'm going to talk about is Green Light by Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey is, of course, the actor and he came out with his memoir I think last year? I think it was last year and it's a memoir where he talks about his childhood, how he became an actor, his acting career, his relationship with his family and how he met his wife when they got married etc etc. I personally found it very interesting. I really like him as an actor. I also really like him as a person slash personality, at least from what I can see from TV and interview and movies and stuff like that. I find him very charismatic and so was his book. It was very entertaining, very deep and insightful, more than what I was expecting, if I have to be honest. Especially when he was talking about some struggles that he had during his career. He was being casted for the same roles over and over again and he wanted to change. He wanted something that would challenge him as an actor, as a person. And he was trying to change his image and go against the preconceived idea that the media and movie industry already had of him. And when he talked about the woman that he would later marry, his idea of marriage was beautiful. Like like what he said, it was basically like something that one could quote and it would sound beautiful and I loved it so much. Of course, I didn't write it down because I was listening to the audiobook, so that's on me. But of course, I would recommend listening to the audiobook because it's Matthew McConaughey himself narrating it and just hear him say, all right, all right, all right, in the way that he says it. Like, it's worth the whole thing. It's not a self-help book, but I liked how it's called The Green Lights because throughout his memoir, he kind of gives the readers some advice or some ideas or bumper stickers, he calls them, on how to turn obstacles or tough life situations into green lights, how to handle certain situations and create opportunities for ourselves. I really loved it and I gave it five stars. Then I read In Love and Pajamas by Katana. This is a collection of comics that are very lighthearted and funny and super relatable. They're about a couple who goes through their everyday life and it's such a good, funny, quick read that you can just flip through from time to time. You don't have to read it all at once, but you can just keep this book on your nightstand and then read a few comics every now and then, one every night or something. Just sprinkle them throughout time because they really lift up your spirits. I mean, I devour the whole thing in a day because once I started, I couldn't <laughs> not finish it. I just wanted to keep going and going because it was just so much fun and every single comic I was literally thinking of my life with my girlfriend, how certain scenes are things that every couple goes through during the day, during their lives together, and it's just <laughs> so much fun and I just loved it and I gave it five stars. Then I read another collection of drawings, not really comics, and it was Us by Curtis Wickland. Basically, the idea behind this collection of drawings is that Curtis's wife. Basically, the idea behind this book is that the author's wife challenged him to draw one different drawing each day for one year. And at the end of the year, the artist realized that he had very nice drawings that kind of told the story of his love and his life with his wife. And so he decided to publish this collection of drawings. The drawings are very beautiful, I gotta say. They were such a beautiful thing to look at and I love them. They are very different from each other. Some are just traced in pencil, others have watercolor. He used different art styles, so they're very pretty to look at and I love doing it. My problem was that there are less than a hundred drawings, I think, and I guess he made 365 because the challenge, like the bet, was for one year and of course maybe not all drawings were perfect so he chose which drawings to put in this book. But the other problem then was that they weren't really 
following any kind of order, not a chronological order, not any art related order so they felt a bit disjointed not really connected with one another it felt like there wasn't really an idea a concept behind the book as an object like a book ish object and that was very disappointing because i loved the drawings the drawings would be five stars but the fact that there wasn't really an idea behind the book and there wasn't any kind of order or thread or narrative or story behind those images that put those images together in a more coherent, flowing way that made the star rating go down to three stars. In the meantime, I was listening to the audiobook of The Henna Wars by Adiba Jarjidar and this unfortunately was a disappointment for me and it was even more disappointing because it was one of my most anticipated releases for 2020 i didn't get to it in 2020 i was so happy when i finally got the audiobook from the libby app in 2021 this year but i didn't like it so what i want to say right away is that this is definitely an important book because it's a love story between Nishat, who is a Muslim girl who lives in a small town in Ireland and she falls in love with this girl, Flavia. I think it was marketed as an enemies to lovers kind of romance because, because for their business class, I think, they have to create a startup business project, a startup company and they both choose henna. Henna is part of the Bengali culture, so it's part of Nishat's culture. It's not part of Flavia's culture it's because she's Latina. Despite that, since she's an artist, she's great at designs and drawings, she decides to start a henna business as well. And that creates conflict between the two girls who were starting to build a friendship bordering on something more. As I said, it is a very important book because it portrays Bengali culture, it speaks about their culture, the food, the relationship with parents, relatives, and there's also intersectionality because Nishat is Bengali, but she's also a lesbian, she falls in love with a Latinx girl, and it's an interesting and of course faithful portrayal because this is on voices of how it feels when you belong to more minorities, more minority groups, both from a cultural point of view and a sexual identity point of view. My main issue was with the story itself, as in the writing, because I didn't really feel like all the secondary characters were present. I feel like Nishat was the only one who was multidimensional and all the other characters were just there in the background to, I don't know, to support her story in some way, I guess, but they didn't really feel like real people as it should happen in books. I didn't really see any chemistry between Nishat and Flavia. The development of their relationship didn't seem like natural, as if it was forced because there had to be a lesbian love story, not because they were actually falling in love, because they had things in common, because they got to know each other over time. I don't know, it was just, it just felt forced in a way, not quite realistic. And also the tone, I mean, I think they were 15 or 16 years old, but it felt a bit more immature than that, as if they were like 12 or 13. So it is definitely aimed at a way younger audience, not really upper teenagers. But even then, if they were 15, they were acting a bit childishly, I think. So it just didn't jive well with me. I want to say at this point but it is an important book and we definitely need more books like this one maybe not this one specifically i personally didn't like it but i know that lots of readers liked it so it might just be me or not. The last book I'm going to talk about in this video is Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man by Emmanuel Ako and I listened to the audiobook of this one, the author himself narrated the book. This is a non-fiction book about black people, about having uncomfortable conversations with black people about black people so that 
white people stop acting in the way that they act and they can learn more and treat black people with more respect. I think this book is a great starting point for those people, such as myself, who unfortunately haven't read many non-fiction books that deal with this topic, such as black people, black culture, um, racism, police brutality, and so on and so forth. It's a great starting point. And in fact, what I liked the most was the fact that at the end of every single chapter, which of course deals with a different topic. Emmanuel Ako gives the reader sources that he can go and research further, that can be books, TV shows, movies, documentaries, so that anyone can choose the kind of media or form of storytelling that suits them best. And I also actually really, really love the fact that, as the title says, it's uncomfortable conversations. It has a very friendly and open way of talking and discussing things, even of course you can't, you know, actually talk to him, but it feels like he's talking to you. So the book has the tone of him sitting down with you and having a conversation. He's not there to just teach you something, he's not there to reprimand or blame you for not knowing certain things. He's just there sitting with you, having a maybe a bit uncomfortable conversation, uncomfortable for white people, of course. I only had one issue with this book, but to me it was kind of a big issue because it touches me personally, is the fact that at one point in a specific chapter that talked about interracial relationships, he said that he has trouble when he sees interracial couples, as in he has trouble understanding why there are interracial couples, because black people should date or be with black people, and he gives a few reasons why. He explains why he thinks that in the book. First of all, I don't agree with that, but anyway. Later, if we can truly integrate white people and black people together, working in tandem, that's when our world will make its joyful noise. And what I say to that is, isn't an interracial couple the point? <laughs> like, isn't it exactly what this sentence is saying? Because I feel like an interracial couple means you have a white person and a black person being together loving each other, which is, I think, the greatest, highest possible level of interaction and working together that you could achieve <laughs> if they choose to be together and spend their life together, loving each other, being on the same level. But I did have a conversation about this with my girlfriend, who's black, so I think that he made his point because we had a conversation about it and his book was about having conversation with a black person. So, I don't know. As I said, that's the only issue that I had with the book, but I think it's a great starting point and I would recommend it. And I think that this year, either it has come out already or it's coming out a young adult version of this book. So, you know, kids, go read it, go learn something, have some uncomfortable conversations, talk about it and learn some more. And this was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments down below if you have read any of these books, if you would like to. And please let me know in the comments what you think about that issue that I had <laughs> with the uncomfortable conversation topic that I didn't quite agree with. Don't forget to like, subscribe and follow me and be friends with me on all the social media stuff, places, whatever, and I'll see you very soon with the next Recent Reads video. Warm hugs!